Hey y'all, good morning. This is Amber J. Adams and you are watching The Fab Life Project, the show for millennials who are determined to live on their own terms. Um, so today I have what I think is a really good show for you and one that I think is so identifiable for everyone. Topic of the show is don't let embarrassment win when you are pursuing your dream. Meaning that when you are in the middle of doing something new, maybe you are, I don't know, getting ready to start a new job. Maybe you have a bigger dream for yourself. Maybe you want to do something creative and fun and just something that really kind of scares you a little bit. There are some feelings that creep up. I have dealt with those feelings. I continue to deal with those feelings. I might be dealing with them right now, but I thought that this would be a good space for us to really lean in together today and talk about what it means to keep moving forward, even when you feel like, oh my God, maybe I just want to stop. <laughs> so a little bit about me. I think that sometimes people think that I am just, intrinsically brave. Um, you know, they talk about the strong friend. I feel that I'm the strong friend. I have done a lot of different things in my life that I'm super proud of that, yes, definitely took some bravery, but there are still many areas in which I feel like, you know, I get nervous. I get afraid. I question myself. I doubt myself. I don't know if I am making the right decisions in the moment. There are moments when I look back and say, oh my God, what was I thinking? What was I doing? And especially in this space. So right now, I think, you know, if you've been tuning in for a while or if you're new, hello, I am pursuing a coaching certification. I'm almost done. I'll actually be done in April. As a leadership and executive coach, I'm getting my certification from Brown University. It has been a beautiful experience, but I think all of my classmates would tell you, my goodness, have we had to get out of our comfort zones? Um, have we had to push ourselves forward? And we know that this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. So every day, you know, I'm trying to show up in new ways, in unique ways. And I know that I'm not alone. Raise your hand if you're out there also like, girl, I feel this. I also am wanting to do new things. I'm pushing myself to go forward. Maybe you've decided that 2023 is the year you show up. Um, but I have three ideas for you that I have kind of been, you know, keeping as my mantras to allow me to keep going and to really keep navigating through all of the feelings of doubt, the feelings of ickiness, the cringe, the awkwardness, all of those things. So one of the first things, one of the first ideas that I'm going to share with you all is to go back and watch someone else's start. So you're kind of seeing my start right now in real time, but go back and watch someone else's start. I know that now we're living in this space of, you know, where everything feels extremely filtered. Everything feels so sanitized, like vulnerability and feelings just aren't in the space. Um, but I think it's so helpful when you're starting something new, no matter what that is, maybe it's a new business, it's a new job, a creative pursuit, whatever it might be to go back and watch someone else's start. If you're like me, you probably have, you know, your favorites across the web. I have my favorite YouTubers. I have my favorite Instagram people. Um, I have different people that, you know, I've been watching for a while and sometimes it feels like, oh my God, they are so far ahead of the game. They are, you know, killing it. They're doing their thing. Their camera looks better, all this stuff. Um, but if you go back and see where they started, if you go back and see where they begin, I think it is one, it's super humbling because you see that this person had to just keep going, that we all have to just keep going. And so you really get a sense of that when you're looking at someone else's older content, or maybe, you know, you're reading the biography of somebody, you're kind of getting an idea of where their story really started from. But the other thing that I think that that does is it really allows you to see your capacity for greatness, that if this person started, you know, what was it started at the bottom? Maybe they got it out the mud, you know, all of those different things. But they started somewhere. 
and now they are doing great things and everything's looking fly and fancy, they had to begin. You know, in the beginning, sometimes it's awkward and it's rocky, but they didn't pop out of the womb ready. They didn't come out ready to just take on the world and have everything looking perfect. They had to start somewhere. And if they had to start somewhere, that means that I, you, us, we, whoever is watching today, we have to start somewhere too. So that's my first idea for you all when you're feeling like, oh, the embarrassment just wants to swallow me whole. Go back and look at someone else's start and really see, you know, how humble their beginnings were to keep yourself encouraged for what is to come for you. The second tip or the second idea that I would give you is to know who your true supporters are. Um, and this isn't even about knowing, you know, when we're doing things and it feels awkward and it feels weird. Uh, I don't know about you, but I definitely sometimes feel like, oh my God, like everyone's watching me, even though clearly like I'm going live, like I want people to watch me, but you just have that weird feeling. And I think it's so important in that moment to know who your true supporters are. Maybe these are the friends that have supported you and have seen you, you know, grow up and mature and become um, just, you know, a beautiful person along your journey. But they're the people who are really uh, cheering and rooting for you. They are the people who I would say have two hands, one for pulling you up and the other one for pushing you forward because they believe in you. Maybe these are people, you know, I have, like I mentioned, my classmates who we root for each other, we cheer each other on. Maybe it's your significant other, it's your family members, but these are people who truly see you, not only as who you are, but they see you for who you can become and who you are supposed to be. And they keep you encouraged on your journey. Um, and they are just really there for you. They are there rooting you on no matter what's going on. And they are the people that in those moments when you feel awkward and you feel cringe and you go, oh, my God, you know, I don't know. They are the ones who tell you, keep going, keep going, keep moving forward. Do not let the embarrassment win. You have things to do. The third idea that I want to give you all I think this is going to turn out to be a short show, but I like to get in and do my thing. Um, is that most important? Actually, I think this is one of the most important ideas that I will share out of the three is to ask yourself, what did I learn or what am I learning? Meaning that each time you do something that is new, that feels awkward where maybe the embarrassment is setting in you're just like oh my god what did you learn from that experience and I'm gonna venture out to say I hope you look for the positive or you look at things that maybe don't feel so so good they feel a little negative but you find the lesson in that one of my favorite um quotes, and I don't know who said this, I've just seen it kind of floating around the web, is that there is no such thing as failure. There are only lessons. Or if there is failure, the failure was that you failed to learn the lesson that the experience gave you. So super important to ask yourself, what did I learn from this? Um, so me last week, you know, I'm here, I'm doing these shows, and I truly love it. And I challenge myself each week to say, okay, well, what did I learn from doing that? So last week I learned that I don't like having the iPad. I had the iPad last week and it was like awkward for me because I kept looking down at it and I felt like it was kind of throwing off my rhythm and my energy and I had this thing in my hands. And I was like, you know what? No iPad this week. So that was something I learned. I also learned, and I know this and I have to be conscious of it. I have to keep focused on looking at the camera and that I have to prepare and get ready to do this show. A lot of things going behind the scenes. And that when I'm kind of scrambling in that last minute before I go live, I don't feel good. And I want to be here and I want to give you all that energy. So really asking yourself, what did I learn? And really continuing to learn something each time you do that new thing. Each time you branch out there and maybe it feels uncomfortable you're learning something. Believe that you are learning something. I know that you are. So those are the three ideas I wanted to share with you all today. Kind of came through. Um, maybe I'm learning to 
keep it all tight, keep it right, keep it tight. Um, and yeah, this has been so much fun. Thank you all to everyone who has been catching me live, who is stopping your scroll, catching me on the replay. I would love to hear from you all in the comments, whether it's live or it's later. Um, what is something that you are needing some encouragement with? Maybe you're trying something new. You have something in your mind that you want to pursue. I hope that you let this show be an encouragement to you, but also I would love to cheer you on. If you drop a comment and tell me what that thing is, I would love to be able to give you that energy. Second thing, I have a newsletter. The Fab Life Project has a newsletter. I actually think the word newsletter is a disservice. Um, that link is also in the comments as well. It's called the Sunday Reset. I send it out every Sunday because the whole thing is how can we get our mind right, our energy right, our flow together as we go into the week ahead? So I send out, sometimes it's links to like music that I think is just, you know, something maybe I found or something that has been, you know, um, a part of my musical repertoire for a while that I think is a good energetic way to start the week. I also include a journal prompt. So that way, you know, you have some time to sit back and reflect as you want to move forward. And of course, I include a link to the show or any live things that I've done throughout the week that I think are helpful for you all to have. So if you are millennial, mid-career professional, you know, 80s babies, 90s kids, you need to be uh, subscribed to the Sunday Reset newsletter because we want you to go into the week feeling fabulous. All right. Thank y'all so much. That's the show that I have. Catch me on the replay. Catch old episodes. And I will rock with you next week. And this is the other thing that I've got to learn. How to end the stream. <laughs> how to end the stream in a way that is not awkward. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Bye.